So there are two uh, important things to take away from this slide. The first thing is that I said that London dispersion forces were weak, but that you can measure them. And the way that they are measured a lot of the time is they're measured by measuring the boiling point of molecules. So basically, um, like I said in an earlier slide, if you have a bunch of molecules, like A's, that like to stick together, they're going to be harder to boil away than another collection of molecules, maybe B's, that don't like to stick together as much. So the A's that like to stick together, they'll have a higher uh, boiling point than the B molecule. And th this can happen because if you have, if the A molecules have bigger London dispersion forces, in other words, the London dispersion forces are bigger with the A's and so they like to stick to each other a little bit more, then the A molecules will have a higher boiling point. And so London dispersion forces are, uh, are a lot of times measured using boiling point. So higher boiling point means uh, bigger London dispersion forces. And if you look at this chart, this chart is basically trying to tell you that uh, the bigger the molecule is, as long as things are more or less the same between when you're comparing different kinds of molecules, um, the, the harder it is to boil them away. You can see the boiling point going up and up and up as the molecules get bigger. You know, they go from smaller to bigger to bigger to bigger. Um, and the boiling points go up as they get bigger. So the idea is bigger molecules have uh, more London dispersion forces. And I'll give you an explanation for why that is in a second. And basically, bigger London dispersion forces means uh, that you'll have a higher boiling point because the atoms or molecules are going to want to stick to each other a little bit more. The reason that bigger molecules have uh, bigger London dispersion forces is uh, pretty straightforward. Basically, the bigger the molecule you have, the more electrons that it's going to have. And if it has more electrons, there's more of a chance that there's going to be um, this uh, a larger imbalance that will, uh, a larger temporary imbalance that will cause the molecules to want to temporarily stick to each other. So, you know, iodine, this is iodine, two iodine uh, atoms stuck to each other. Um, that's fairly big. There are a lot of electrons there. And so if you have a bunch of iodine molecules bouncing around near each other, um, there's a good chance that a lot of electrons will be temporarily moved around and cause this temporary imbalance, which means a bunch of iodines are going to stick together uh, more than would happen if you had uh, a bunch of fluorine molecules, which are much smaller, like the one up here. Um, not as many electrons, so you're not going to have as much of an imbalance. So the take-home lesson from this slide is that bigger molecules have bigger LDF, and bigger and LDF is usually measured by measuring boiling point. And if you have bigger LDF, uh, all things more or less being equal other than the bigger LDF, then you'll have a higher boiling point compared to other molecules that are roughly the, roughly similar. The, the molecules that we're looking at here come from one column in the periodic table. All of these atoms, uh, atoms in this column are called halogen atoms. Um, and so, you know, you can say, well, is, is this really only true? Is this pattern only true for halogen atoms, or is it generally true for a lot of different things? And it's generally true for other things as well. So uh, here, on this chart here, we're looking at uh, alkane molecules. And this is the smallest alkane. And if you look, so what they're plotting on this chart is they're plotting um, basically how much each molecule weighs based on its molar mass, and they're plotting how easy it is or how difficult it is to boil that kind of molecule away. And the idea here is that uh, the alkanes are all pretty similar to each other, except they come in different sizes. So the smallest alkane has the smallest boiling point. It's the easiest to boil away because it has the least amount of LDF, LDF. London dispersion forces. Then the second biggest alkane is over here, and its boiling point is a little bit bigger. Third biggest alkane is there, fourth biggest, etc., etc. So the um, all the alkane molecules are, are roughly similar uh, in the way they behave, but the bigger they are, the harder they're to they are to boil away. And the reason is that the bigger molecules 
have more London dispersion forces than the smaller molecules. And if they have more London dispersion forces, they're going to stick to each other a little bit more, and that means they're going to be harder to boil away. So this is generally true. It's not just true for the halogens like I showed you on the previous slide. It's also true, generally speaking, that the bigger the molecule, the more London dispersion forces. The more London dispersion forces, the harder it is to boil them away. Uh, what you should know about this stuff, you should know what London dispersion forces are and how they are formed. Um, you should know the general trend between how big the atom is or how big the molecule is and how strong London dispersion forces are. Basically, bigger is stronger. Um, you should know general trend between how much the molecules weigh and the strength of London dispersion forces. That's basically the same thing. The, the, the heavier the molecule is or the bigger the molecule is usually means the stronger the amount of London dispersion forces. Um, and then you should know that London dispersion forces is very often, the amount of London dispersion forces are very often measured by measuring boiling point. So higher boiling point means more London dispersion forces because it means it's harder to boil something away. To save my soul. Mm-hmm.